Hi, I'm E.D. Lewis, and welcome back to my channel, and today we're going to do, um, kind of two reviews. I wasn't really planning to do that, but, um, a little bit ago I just read a short little, uh, book that I want to do a menu review on, so this was not planned to be a double review. Also, we're doing things a little dark today because I am doing those, uh, the rainbow colors again. I was hoping that if I didn't have on as many lights, Maybe you could see them better. Um, I don't think that's the case, but oh well, maybe in uh, editing I'll just lighten everything up. But anyway, uh, so yeah, we're doing things a little dark today. But that's okay. So today's primary review, this was my main pride read. This is the only pride read I had meant to do. Um, I just didn't have any pride reads really lined up except for one this year. And, of course, that's now changed because I just read another one today. So the primary one is... I feel like I should do dun-da-da-da for this. <laughs> anyway, uh, is Castle of Dark Shadows by Patty G. Henderson. And this book I actually discovered in the um, nonfiction book that I read earlier this year. Uh, and I know I'm going to do a review on it, I just don't know when, so who knows. <laughs> so anyway, um, but, oh yeah, by the way, it's by Laura A. Page. And an excellent book, do check it out if you're interested in uh, gothic, uh, you know, the history of gothic publishing and, you know, gothic romance. If you're a gothic romance fan, then you should definitely love it. Um, but anyway, so this book came out in 2012, Castle of Dark Shadows, I mean. And, uh, I'm not, I don't normally do this very often, I do it occasionally, is I read this, the given synopsis. Uh, this book's a little harder for me to kind of sum up. So I'm going to go ahead and read the synopsis to you, and then I'm going to add my thoughts, because that's the best way I can do a review for this book. Um, Olivia Hampton's lifelong love of dark literature led her to accept a job as a cataloger for Julian Dunraven's extensive but extremely disorderly library. The only problem is that the position requires her to work at Dunraven Castle, the remote and mysterious home of the Dunraven family. In Victorian America, a young lady had to either earn her keep or be married off to the best man for her hand. Olivia accepted the position at Dunraven Castle. Olivia could not have guessed the dangers that awaited her in the exotic but darkly menacing castle. When there is an accident on the road to Dunraven, she wonders, are the broken carriage wheels mere random misfortune or a sign foretelling doom? Olivia's fears soon turn to mortal terror after a subsequent encounter with a terrifying faceless phantom uh, disabuses her of the random misfortune theory. Frightened but undaunted, she decides to put the nightmare behind her and throw herself into cataloging the enormous Dunraven library. What Olivia could not have foreseen was the devastatingly beautiful Marion Dunraven's effect on her heart. But the madness that seemed to course, sorry, seemed to curse the rest of the Dunraven family makes Olivia realize she must find a way to escape Dunraven Castle with her life and the woman she loves before they both become victims. So, uh, yeah, this was a female-female romance. Um, and to be honest, I hadn't read the description of the book till I was like, halfway or a little more than halfway through the book because it's not a very long book it's only like 150 pages or so uh it says on online 162 but uh yeah it's not a very long book and this one doesn't have great reviews on it and i can understand why it's not the worst but it's also not the best and that sounds way worse than what i'm meaning it to be um, it's a very entertaining book. Um, you have that curse of madness. You have the terror. It's very much a terror gothic, not a horror gothic. 
So Olivia comes to this house, you know, she's going to be this librarian, she's going to go through this very daunting task, because the library is like, there's books all over the floor, it sounds like, you know, it sounds like the Summerlands, <laughs> or at least what a portion of my version of the Summerlands might be. Um, and, you know, this very strange family, uh, Marion, who she's instantly attracted to, and then there's Cora, her sister. And Cora uh, seemingly is has this madness that is seemingly cursed the family because it's affected. I think her mother, uh, their mother. Um, there's a sister, another sister that had died mysteriously years before, and um, it doesn't seem to affect Marion in the same way. Then there's the father. Um, who is kind of reclusive, he stays in his room, he's been ill for a really long time, and, uh, yeah, there's kind of that mystery and uh, tension about him going on. So there's a lot of tension build up, and there's this mysterious phantom, of course, that keeps stalking, uh, Olivia. It shows up in her room, and it shows up in various places in the castle, and, by the way, this takes place in Maine, in, like, the early 1880s. And, um, which I thought was kind of weird that there was a castle in Maine, but I guess, you know, since it was a long time ago, I mean, that's quite the possibility. There are a few castles here in the United States, uh, not many that I am aware of, but anyway. I feel like it could have been expanded upon, and, um, oh, what was the other thing? I put it in my Goodreads review. can't remember, but one of the things is I thought it could have been expanded upon, and, uh, oh, red herrings, that was the other thing. There could have been some more red herrings. There wasn't a lot of red herrings to give you a lot of doubt about who this assailant is, which was a little disappointing. It was still quite enjoyable, though, but it did lack a little. Um, it's not as good as, like, previous female and female gothic romances that I've read, such as, not that I've read that many, very, very few. Uh, unlike, um, The Wife in the Attic, which was absolutely excellent. And to some degree, you would also include in there, um, well, quite a bit of degree, actually, uh, The Book of Thorns by Hester Fox that just came out this year, which I, uh, greatly enjoyed. Um, not a perfect read, but still greatly enjoyed. Um... But yeah, uh, I, when I first heard about this book in the Gothic Romance Wave, I was almost a little bit under the impression, because she didn't say much about it. She just said that her, a lady was, you know, goes to this house to be a librarian, and I thought and it, that it was a an LGBTQ plus gothic. It was a, a, you know, lesbian gothic. And I was just thinking... Hmm, this sounds like, you know, like a, a lesbian version of Gaywick, and I love Gaywick, so, you know, I definitely gotta check that out. It's not like Gaywick. The only similarities, besides it being a gothic romance and some weird, mysterious stuff going on, and the, and the library thing, that's it. That, that's really the only connections, and it takes place in the past. Um, I know, I just changed how I was saying that sentence there, but that's okay. So, uh, yeah, and also the title also was alluring to me because it's called Castle of Dark Shadows, and of course, yeah, I'm a big fan of Dark Shadows. I wonder if the author, um, was a fan of Dark Shadows and made kind of an allusion to that. Plus, the cover is very much of that classic gothic romance where the girl is, she's not running away from the castle, but she's just standing there and the castle's in the background, and it's a very gloomy setting. This book had, like, all the, the atmosphere and that gothic feel. So it had those elements that I was really enjoying at the beginning, but as the book went on, I had a little bit less enjoyment. It was still enjoyable, just not to what I was hoping. So my expectations were a little higher. Um, but anyway, that is my first and main review. Now the second little mini review is A Day of Pride by Roy, uh, I know I'm gonna butcher this name, I'm so sorry. Roy Yoldus Reyes, or Yoldus Rice. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, but I'll have it on the screen. This was, uh, it's, a little, it's a children's picture book, and I actually just got it today, the day that I'm filming this, which is still uh, just over a week before it goes up. 
and because uh, I saw it on Free Booksy, which I've recently subscribed to, and I was like, hmm, well, you know, that, that, you know, looks cool. I, I'll check that out. Why not? And it was free. Um, I did greatly enjoy the book. It's, a, uh, it's, a, you know, it's, it's written in rhyme, which I thought was very, uh, very charming, and has great illustrations. It has a nice, uplifting story and uplifting message. And, uh, my only, I, I had one little criticism while I was reading it, and it was how the villain, what, what is used as the villain, I was just not crazy about. I'm like, oh, why did they have to do that? And, but by the end of the book, it all pays off, and I'm like, oh, okay, now I get it. Never mind, forget that criticism. This book is, you know, it's, it's cute. It's awesome. Uh, so I would give this book four stars. Uh, definitely recommend it. But, here's my but though, and it's not on the book itself, it's on the format that I got. So since it was on Free Booksy, I got it as a Kindle book. It doesn't work very well as a Kindle book. It would be great in its physical form. Um, so if you're going to get this book, I highly recommend you get the physical form, which I think is paperback. Uh, don't really get the Kindle, because there's a problem with the Kindle. Um, now, usually for my Kindle, I keep it in portrait all the time. So I decided to switch it to uh, landscape, or auto-rotate, sorry. And because I thought, you know, because it was a little hard to read, and um, the way it was presented in the Kindle version, it just, it wasn't working. It was hard to really read. I was able to read it, but it made things difficult, and I couldn't zoom or anything. So I changed to auto-rotate and flipped my Kindle. It did nothing. I thought maybe there's something wrong with my Kindle. I kept reading for a little bit and I thought, you know, I'm going to go out of the book. I went back into the book I recently finished, which was the, uh, the Castle of Dark Shadows book. And yeah, it auto-rotated instantly when I flipped it. So they don't have the auto-rotate in the formatting for some reason. That's my only criticism with the format. Um, so it made things hard to read, and you can zoom, you can highlight words because it's a picture book. Uh, but rather, rather than that, I would recommend this book. Um, it's just, I wouldn't recommend you get it in, in Kindle. So four stars, uh, definitely check out A Day of Pride. And uh, if you are interested in checking out uh, Castle of Dark Shadows, it's available in Kindle. Unfortunately, it's not available in physical form, just Kindle edition. You might be able to find it on Nook or some other uh, ebook site, but ebook is the only format you can read it in. So that's my Pride Month reviews. <laughs> um, I've got a few more videos coming up this month. And uh, so, yes, yeah, stay safe, stay spooky, and happy Pride. And until next time, bye bye.